Hey, it's Chris. Legion Games, baby. So, today, we're going to be talking about Kingdom Death Monster. No, nah, no, nah, just kidding. <laughs> Clearly, we're talking about Everdell, and, you know, I didn't really have any other use for the sleeve. So, you know, there it goes. But, we're going to be talking about Everdell because it is not the 29th best game ever made, right? It's not. But that's what it's rated right now on Board Game Geek. But it does something that a lot of other games haven't done. It does something that a lot of other games and companies wish they could do. It's an imperfect game. It is flawed. It is openly flawed. And it has had multiple expansions to expound and to try to fix the flaw in the first place. So let's talk about what makes Everdell so good while being flawed at the same time. Let's do this. I'm not going to make this the umpteenth video that explains to you the rules or, you know, the nuance mechanisms of a game like this. There's plenty of other videos out there like that. What you need to know in a video like this is whether or not this game is right for you and what makes it stand out from other games and why you would want to play this in your collection or have this in your collection in the first place. So let's go over five points really quickly to give you an idea of why it is the way it is and why it's thought of the way it is. So a little backstory. Starling Games, I've had this game sitting on my shelf for a long time since almost the time i started the channel this was one of the first games that i ever got sent to me as a review copy so first and foremost i want to say thank you to them for being willing to even send something my direction because as much as i still feel like a no name and a nobody they were really sending something to a nobody at that point you know got like 300 subscribers, maybe 400. I don't even know at that point, but it was not where we are now. One, the first one, right, right off the bat. We're going with elegism here. Attractability scale. The attractability is off of the scale. This has a sheer presence on the shelf in terms of the artwork. It has a presence in terms of the sheer table when you have that overproduced tree that is you know not a huge interest of mine but it attracts the eyes the top-notch production cannot be understated because oftentimes when you are attempting to teach a game those are the first impressions that people are stuck with and that cannot be over appreciated and that is number one but that leads me right into number two number two is the fact that the rule book is like four pages. It reminds me in somewhat the sense of El Grande, if you stay with me here for a second, in this manner of speaking, it's very small on the paper, but it's much bigger on the table. Sort of a TARDIS board game, if you know what I'm saying. It's bigger on the inside. You know where I'm going with that if you're Dr. Whovian. But... What also is really impressive is not only is it compact, but it makes sense. The rules are clean and crisp. There is no ambiguity. You can read it and play it just that quickly. You don't need a watch it played. You don't need a how-to. It's boom, there you go. Because again, what is going to make a game more accessible to a non-gamer? Being able to pick it up really quickly and read it. You know, I know where all those things are. I know where all those resources are. But if you're someone looking at this off the shelf and you just want to get it played, you're not going to be like, well, let me find out what the best board game website is and let me see if I can maneuver through this board game geek archaic structure of a website to find out how to play this game because the rules are... No, you're not going to do that. And therefore, this game achieves that mass appeal from that side of things. And when it, you play it, it just makes sense. The actions in which you're doing when you're placing your workers, you're building your 15-card Tableau Max, you have a hand that you are drafting and you are deciding between. All of those elements are separate and equal and well-explained and well-defined, and they work synergistically. Now, going into the third point, 
They're not balanced. No one's going to claim balance, especially with the base game. It's not balanced. There are things that are much more powerful than others if you can get them and if you know about them. If you know this game, if you have played this game several times, you're going to have a distinct advantage over someone that has not played it at all. You are going to pick up things faster. You are going to realize there are things that you're going to be able to utilize or do based on what is in front of you and what isn't in front of you. And you know what? The perfect thing about that is that it doesn't break the game. It can be unbalanced, but it doesn't make it a fool's errand to play at the same time. You can still vastly enjoy yourself when you are playing it, because again, that cannot be overappreciated either. But again, I mean, it's it's not the balanced game that if you're looking for a tight cutthroat worker placement style of things, this is not going to be that. This is the ultimate gateway tableau worker placement management style game and i say that i use that term gateway very affectionately here not as a pejorative i use it in the sense that you get people with a game like this this is the game that gets them to want to play other things a la wingspan has done on the other side of things and again anything that gets more people more interested in the hobby is a win in my book. Do I like worker placement? No, I am not a big fan of worker placement. There's a reason I don't cover a lot of worker placements on my channel is because I just don't enjoy them. My brain does not work that way, but this makes it easy for people's brains like my own, which do not comprehend those connections very well sometimes, to be able to do it with the combination of mechanisms when one or the other alone or combined isn't able to do so. And that leads me directly into point four, where again, it appeals to the gamer, the non waist deep into the hobby gamer. It appeals more, I'm not gonna say widely, but it appeals more to the Euro worker placement type of people, but it also has a little bit of cross bipartisan appeal to a marathrashers like myself with the cards and the randomization and the tableau building elements, which are a relatively strong component of things. It's crossing streams, if you will, to use the Ghostbusters metaphor in a positive way, unlike how it sometimes happens in the movies. The last point here is the one that keeps people coming back to it. It's the cleverness and the momentum building that you can achieve in this game to make you feel good. The thing that makes you go, ha ha, look what I did. Oh, that was clever. Look at that combo that I just pulled off. Ha ha, got you there. Look at this turn. And that has it in spades. And again... That is a dopamine rush that gets people wanting to come back and play it again and again to see how they can do it in a different way, how they can outdo themselves from the previous way in whatever situation they're in because you're finding yourself in a completely different situation than you were before and having to adapt to it and how well can you adapt to it and we like overcoming in that sense. And when you do it, it makes you all the more interested in the first place. Again, is it a absolutely top, you know, favorite game of mine? Uh, you know, always want to play it in my collection? No, it's not. It's not. Will I play it if somebody pulled that out and said, Hey, Chris, would you, you want to play this? You want to teach me how to play this? This looks kind of cool. Hey, Chris, I was wondering if we could play this again. And I'd be like, yeah. And so that's the distinction. And that is the appeal for it. I mean, like I said, it's not a perfect game by any means. It's definitely imperfect. But it shines through its imperfections as well at the same time. And that's why I think it's worth a look at no matter who you are or what your interest is in. But again, that's just my opinion. So, and I'm usually wrong if you listen to the comment section. So, okay, that's all I got. Quick, easy, five pointers. 
We're done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking. At some point, I'm going to get some expansion reviews up here too. Because I got a couple of those that I need to detail as well. So, if you like that, click subscribe. Throw me a sub. Throw me a comment. How wrong am I? Tell me in the comment section. I love it. Stay classy. I'll see you around.